Good morning. The time is 9 a.m. and I will call to order the January 26, 2022 Enforcement Committee meeting of the Contractor State License Board. I am Rodney Kobos, Enforcement Committee Chair. Board member Don Gerritano has an approved absence. Please note that only board members who are members of the Standing Committee may participate in this committee meeting. Other board members who are in attendance may observe but cannot ask questions or participate in the discussion. Committee members, to mitigate any potential bandwidth issues, we ask that you turn off your video camera. When you would like to comment at any time during the meeting, please select the raise your, raise your hand icon in the WebEx application. I will call on committee members to speak. When called upon, please unmute yourself and when finished, return to mute. You will also need to click on the raise your hand icon to lower your hand. Mariah, please call roll and confirm we have a quorum. Rodney Kobos. Present. David De La Torre. Here. Don Giacarno. Absent. Diana Love. Here. Michael Mark. Here. Cindy Rich. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to ask you to please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next is agenda item B, our public comment section. This item is provided for public comment pertaining to items not on the agenda. To allow this committee enough time to conduct its full schedule of business, I will be limiting public comment to three minutes apiece. Please note that the state law prohibits committee members from discussing any matter brought up during public comment. We are also not allowed to act on any item not on the agenda. If you want the committee to discuss a topic not on the agenda, you can ask us to consider placing that issue on the agenda of a future meeting. If you have an application, complaint, or disciplinary charges pending before the board, we ask that you not disclose the details of your case or pending complaint. Committee members are not permitted to receive evidence or information not part of the administrative record in the case. If your comments, if your comments are related to a specific agenda item, you can make your comments now, but you may want to wait until that item comes up for discussion. We will ask for public comment before acting on any item. Shelly Jones is our host and moderator for today. She will be assisting us by monitoring public comment. Do any committee members have an agenda? I, excuse me. Any committee members have an item that would like to place on a future meeting agenda? Shelley, are there any members of the public who wish to address the committee or to offer an agenda item for a future meeting? This is the moderator. For public comment today, you'll be utilizing that question and answer feature or raising your hand. To locate the Q&A feature, you will find that Q&A icon on your screen, which looks like a question mark inside of a square. When you click on that, it will open a text box. And in that text box, you can type, I would like to make a comment and submit that to our panelists. To raise your hand, you can hover your mouse over your name. To the right of your name, you will see a small hand icon. And if you click on that, it will raise your hand. Thank you. This time I'm not seeing any requests. Okay, thank you. We are we are on agenda item C, which is the establishment of the enforcement division strategic plan objectives and target dates. You can find the objectives on page 122 of your packet. We will begin with strategic objective items 2.1, which reads leverage current enforcement tools 
letters of admonishment and accusations to increase licensee and business knowledge by requiring contractors subject to the CSLB corrective action take specified courses. CSLB enforcement staff will meet with construction industry leaders and government agencies, government agency partners to determine what courses would be best to meet the needs of licensees and will work with the Public Affairs Office to develop additional online training courses, such as the building permit training video that can be found on the CSLB website. Enforcement staff has a set target date of July 2022 to begin the process of identifying training needs. Any comments from committee members on objective 2.1? Uh, strategic objective items 2.1 states research the scope of unlicensed practice evaluate allocated enforcement resources and meet with industry stakeholders to review enforcement strategies cslb enforcement leadership will identify a working group that will meet to prepare a scope of work for an outside consultant to be hired to assist in developing a plan to address unlicensed practice and its impacts on the underground economy. The proposal for hiring a consultant will be presented to the members of the enforcement committee by the target date of July 2022. Any comments from committee members on item 2.2? Seeing none, moving on to strategic item 2.3. This objective states coordinate educational work agency partners to assist applicants and licensees in complying with contractor state license law and other business requirements. CSLB staff will make a presentation at the March 2022 meeting of the Joint Enforcement Strike Force to request their support for this objective. For those of you who may not be familiar with the, the Joint Enforcement Strike Force, or JESF, JESF is a statutorily established collaboration of, Calif of California tax, wage, workplace safety, and state licensing agencies. Participants include Employment Development Department, Department of Industrial Relations, Division of the Labor Standards Enforcement and Division of Occupational Safety and Health and the Department of Insurance. JESF works with local and federal agencies to combat the underground economy in California, promote a level playing field for California businesses. CSLB staff will present an educational workshop plan to the Enforcement Committee by the target date of July 2022. Any comments from committee members on items 2.3? Yes, Mr. Chairman, this is a uh, board member David Del Torre. Uh, quick question: Are you know in today's climate, um, uh, are these uh, being proposed remotely or in person? I will turn that question over to. David. I'll take care of it. Thanks. Thanks, Rodney. And, and thanks, David. Um, I, I guess if we were doing it today, it would be probably remotely, but I think we're going to just wait and see. Um, and hopefully we can do these in person. Most of these partner agencies already do some kind of workshops. So our goal and our hope is that we participate in their existing ones to include CSLB uh, avenues and paths for ap applicants and people to become licensed in the, in the field of construction, along with learning how to do EDD requirements, DLSC, and things like that. So remotely, probably in the early, if we were to do this soon, but you know, as the, hopefully as time in the COVID flares up, we could probably do those in person. And I believe, you know, once that happens, it'll be more effective. I hope I answered your question. I understand it's, it's fluid. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jesse. Okay, strategic uh, objective item 2.4 reads, review and create a structured enforcement training program 
with an enforcement academy to achieve statewide investigation and legal action consistency. CSLB staff has set a target date of July 2023. CSLB staff will create an updated training program and enforcement academy for committee consideration. Any comments from the committee members on objective 2.4? See a none uh, strategic objective. I Board Member Cobos, so I do have a question. Um, for item 2.4, um, th this enforcement academy can can uh, staff enlighten us a little bit more on on this particular item. Sure. Um, prior to COVID, we consistently had a weekly enforcement academy with trainings from a retired CHP officer as well as one of our liaisons from the Attorney General's office about investigation processes. Um, all this is available. I'd be happy to share with you uh, what we do, the agenda of the training. It's a week long, talks about interview techniques. Um, geez, it's skipping my mind. But um, again, it's a week long training that we've done with enforcement staff. Um, as the turnover happens, we tend to get new staff and they need new additional training on how to investigate, what to investigate, elements of an investigation and things like that. So this is, and because of COVID, um, we've had to obviously scale down. We have conducted video trainings where our AG is on the other line and our staff are on the other line. We do video trainings on how to do video interviews, how to conduct, um, you know, those type of things are recording the legalities of recording somebody online, doing identifications and verifying documents as it relates to a construction complaint that a consumer may have. So we're hoping, you know, as we get through this COVID that we can re-implement re the week-long enforcement academy that we used to have and, and all the fundamentals and foundations are already in place. So it's just really starting again and just probably revamping it to today's new challenges that our enforcement staff are, are facing. I hope that answered your question. Thank okay. Thank you, Jesse. Uh, David? Mr. Chairman, yes, I, I do have a follow-up question to that. Um, so would it be uh, under our current unit or would we we be increasing our enforcement unit? Are, do you mean like inf increasing staff? Staff, correct, yeah. Okay. Um, no, I mean, we do have some vacancies and I think somebody will report on that and we are recruiting very actively and facing the challenges of, of interviews and COVID as well. But we have significant amount of, of current staff that are probably, you know, five years or less with CSOB enforcement. And we've been doing a great job of getting training. We've been doing great work. But again, you know, there's some 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 details that probably need to be done at the Enforcement Academy and, and the presenters do a great job at, 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 you know, getting all the people involved and getting the training and the information they need to perform their job effectively and efficiently. So it's, if we get new staff, well, obviously they'll be part of it, but we presently have enough people that probably have enough or need enough experience that they can attend this academy and be an effective investigator. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Any other comments on 2.4? Seeing none. So strategic ob objective item 2.5 states develop a plan for public work enforcement to perform outreach to awarding agencies and coordinate public work investigations with compliance groups and government entities to enforce contractor state license law requirements. CSLB staff will present a, a plan to the enforcement committee that will likely include redirection of two existing investigators to investigate public works complaints and to act as liaisons to awarding agencies, compliance organizations, and other government entities. This plan will be presented to the Enforcement Committee by the target date of July 2022. Any comments from committee members on items 2.5? I have a comment, Mr. Chair. I, this is Diana Love. I just wanted to make sure you started out by saying develop a plan. That seems to be stricken and it says research the need to establish. Has that been changed back to develop? Well, the, the let, let me just add by saying that the redirection of 
the plan is already in place about how we're going to investigate uh, those partnering agencies, compliance organizations, investigation. We've always done that. Um, you know, at, we already have these two re positions in our quality assurance units existing now. We have one person filled that position and we have a vacancy that we're recruiting for to conduct that. So the, the plan is to, to identify the need for if we do need additional staff, but currently we're going to use two people to inv to accomplish this goal that we're trying to accomplish. If we do reach the point where we think we need more staff, we will come back to the board and ask for that. But in the meantime, this is going to address the, the, the immediate issue of our compliance agencies filing complaints and we're investigating them timely. So we're researching. Well, yeah, we're already going to, we're going to be doing both. The plan is developed. We're going to continue to do it. And if while we're doing this, investigating these, we could be researching to see if we need additional staffing okay. to uh, to address this matter. Okay. That make sense? Okay. Yes. Thank you. I believe Michael, I saw Michael's hand up. Yes, Chair Cobos, thank you. Um, I, in, my, in my opinion, this is a very important strategic goal as CSLB is the licensing agency and combating a lot of the underground economy and, and public works. Um, this would be a great way for CSLB to partner with the DSLE and different partnerships to combat some of these the underground economy for the consumers of California. So I appreciate the strategic goal. Thank you, Michael. Any other comments on 2.5? Yeah, Ron, it's Dave Felt. I just wanted to uh, just comment a little bit about what Jesse said, maybe elaborate a little bit on it. Uh, what I think uh, Jesse is proposing is that we're going to meet with awarding agencies, with compliance groups, uh, research the need to take action on contractors, and then come back to the enforcement committee with a plan. Uh, what Jesse said is there, there's two uh, positions that have been identified for this, but I really think we need the enforcement committee's support you know, as we determine what type of referrals we're going to work. Specifically, are we going to look at whether a contractor is properly licensed? Are we going to get into the prevailing wage issues? It's that kind of thing that the plan will include and come back to the enforcement committee so that we don't overreach and so that we're effective with the resources we have. Thank you, David. Any other comments on uh, committee members' comments on uh, 2.5? Okay. The final enforcement strategic objective is item 2.6 and states, continue to enforce workers' compensation insurance requirements to protect consumers and workers and scrutinize licensees who self-certify they have no employees. On January 13, 2021, Senator Dodd introduced the Senate bill, introduced Senate Bill 216, which would require mandatory workers' compensation insurance for all license classifications. This bill was mostly, what, excuse me, this bill was most recently updated on March 15, 2021, in the Senate, and is active in the legislative process. As such, the target date is ongoing. Any are there any comments from committee members on items 2.5? Seeing none, that concludes the update of the enforcement strategic objectives. Mr. Chair, let's ask for public comment on this item. I'm Thank you, Michael. Committee members, do we have any final comments or suggestions? Seeing none. Shelley, is there any public comment? I do not see any requests for comment at this time. Thank you. Okay, do I have a motion to approve the enforcement strategic plan? So moved. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is that Mr. Dilatori and Miss Love? Yes. Yes. Thank you. 
Okay, there's a, a motion, a second uh, motion carries. There has to be a vote, Mr. Chair. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's been, <laughs> thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any other uh, questions, discussions? Seeing none, we'll uh, take a vote. Rodney Kobo. Yes. David De La Torre. Aye. Don Giratano, excused absent. Diana Love. Aye. Michael Mark. Aye. Cindy Rich. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, Mariah. Is there any further comment from committee members? Michael? Yeah, uh, yeah, I do have just a, a quick comment. Overall, I, I believe that all the strategic goals, uh, it's in, in line with our uh, uh, mission there of helping reduce and uh, unlicensed activities. So all of these goals were that was passed today, and it's, it's gonna help us for coming 22 uh, year, so. All right, thank you, Michael. Any other comments from committee members? Uh, Shelly, is there any public comment? I'm not seeing any requests at this. I'm not seeing any requests at this time. Thank you. Mariah, please call roll. Rodney Kobo. Here. David De La Torre. Aye. Don Giratano, approved absence. Diana Love. Here. Michael Mark. Um, I'm here. I'm, I'm confused. What What is this, this roll call vote for? Mr. Chair, the motion already carried on this agenda item. Okay, I, I apologize. I thought we had to take a roll call at the end of the, of the committee. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, if, we, if there's if there's no further business, you can adjourn. Okay, thank you, Michael. We have completed all the agenda items uh, scheduled today. After we adjourn the enforcement committee meeting, after the enforcement committee meeting, short break to transition to the public affairs committee meeting which will be led by Public Affairs Chair Michael Mark. Do, do I have a motion to adjourn the Executive Committee? I move we adjourn. This second. Is it's been moved and seconded to adjourn. Any uh, questions? Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you. Staff, what was the estimated break that was going to be needed? Before Michael, we started. I don't know. If Shelly's ready to go, I don't know that you couldn't go right into your committee. I'm ready when you are. Okay. Do we have all of the uh, public affairs committee members as panelists? Uh, yes, the committee members are actually the same composition as was for the enforcement committee. Okay, then, so we'll start our public affairs committee meeting. Uh, good morning. The time is now 924. Uh, make sure you can hear me. I call to order the January 26, 2022 meeting of the Public Affairs Committee. 
My name is Michael Mark. I am the committee chair. Please note that committee member Donald Giratano has been excused today. Only board members who are members of the Public Affairs Committee may participate in this committee meeting. Other board members who are in attendance may observe, but cannot ask questions or participate in the discussion. Committee members, we will be using cameras during the meeting. To mitigate any potential bandwidth issues, we ask that you turn off your video camera when you are not speaking. When you would like to comment during the meeting, please turn on your camera or select the raise your hand icon in the WebEx application. I will call committee members to speak. When called upon, please unmute yourself and when finished, return to mute and turn off your camera. Shelly Jones is our host and moderator, moderator today. She will be assisting us by monitoring public comment. Uh, Mariah, can you please call roll and establish a quorum? Michael Mark. Here. Rodney Kobo. Here. David De La Torre. Here. Don Giratano, excused absence. Diana Love. Here. Cindy Rich. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. So our next item is agenda item B, our public comment sec section. This item is provided for public comment pertaining to items not on the agenda. To allow the, this committee enough time to conduct its full schedule of business, I will be eliminating public, public comment to three minutes each. Please note that state law prohibits committee members from discussing any matter brought up during public comment. We are not allowed uh, to act on any item not on the agenda. If you want the committee to discuss a topic not on the agenda, you can ask us to consider placing this at issue on the agenda for a future meeting. If you have an application, a complaint, or disciplinary charges pending before the board, we ask that you not discuss the details of your case or pending complaint. Committee members are not permitted to receive evidence or information that is not part of the administrative record in the case. If your comments are related to a specific agenda item, you can make your comments now, but you may want to wait until the item comes up for discussion. We will ask public comment before acting on any item. Shelley, can you see if there's any members of the public who wish to address the committee or offer an agenda item for the future for a future meeting? I currently do not see any hand raises, nor do I see any requests in the QA or chat. All right, thank you. Um, are there any committee members that have an item that would like to be placed on a future meeting agenda? Seeing no hands raised, we will be moving on to agenda item C. Review discuss, discussion and possible action on target dates for the public affairs strategic objectives of the board's 2022-2024 strategic plan. The full draft of the 2022-2024 strategic plan begins on page 109. The public affairs objectives and targets dates, which we'll be re reviewing and discussing today, starts on page 124 of your meeting packet. Public affairs Man manager, Joya Emmerd, is also joining us today and will be available to answer any questions. We will begin with item 4.1. Expand CSLB's online presence through both standard platforms and emerging technologies to improve effectiveness in educating consumers in the industry. As you can see, this objective was edited to provide additional clarity. New text is noted as underline, and deleted text is shown as a strikeout. Currently, public affairs staff is boosting our consumer protection message by increasing the number of short video clips on social media and by translating existing videos into Spanish. Video is one of the fastest growing forms of media on social platforms. 
uh, and staff is also exploring increased use of apps such as Nextdoor and considering a monthly Facebook Live video presentation and also examining podcasting opportunities. In addition, I would like to see us work with partners utilizing websites and social media to help educate licensees and the public. I recommend that public affairs staff report back to the committee on their progress in June 2022. This objective is an ongoing effort. Are there any comments from committee members on objective 4.1? Uh, seeing no hands raised, and um, uh, please, Shelly, if you see a hand raised, uh, please stop me. Um, moving on to item 4.2, establish a CSLB-specific new board member orientation to educate board members about legislative process, licensing, and testing functions, and enforcement procedures. It is important that new board members be educated about CSLB to better fulfill their duties. Therefore, I recommend that the first action to be set up an internal work group made up of representatives from public affairs, licensing, legislation, and, and enforcement divisions to, to determine content that will best assess new board members. I would like a draft script presented to the committee in summer 2022. The proposed target date for a completed video would be uh, January 2023. Are there any comments from committee members on objective 4.2? Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, board member Del Go I, ahead. Um, thank you. Uh, I, I think uh, I think it's great. Um, I know when I was first appointed to the board, uh, you know, I, I stepped on my share of uh, landmines, uh, and I and I still do. But uh, I, I think it's very appropriate. Um, I know that the um, the uh, CSLB does offer the information, uh, but if you don't fish it out, you know, it, it's uh, uh, you won't find it. And you you know, the, um, following procedure, there's a lot of moving parts to this board. Um, so I definitely uh, support and uh, uh, very appropriate. Thank you. I, I'll have to agree with you as a uh, when I was a new board member, I constantly looked at that new board member binder that was uh, hundreds and hundreds of pages, but it was easily able to find the proper tab of information. So, yes, I believe it's very, very important. Um, any other comments for 4.2? Seeing none, our, our next item is item 4.3 update the website content accessibility and navigation to improve the user experience as you can see this objective was edited to provide additional clarity new text is noted as underline i recommend cslb hold a stakeholder meeting that includes consumer and industrial representatives and conduct a survey to better understand the needs of the public and licensees as they, they relate to the website public affairs can then conduct a complete review of the cslb website to, to determine how better to organize information so it's easier to navigate and be more friendly Staff will begin this process right away and report back to the committee in June 2022. This objective is ongoing as the website will need continued attention and updating. Are there any comments from committee members on objective 4.3? I see no, none. I, I do have a comment. I'll, Obviously, that our website's the, one of the most used tools for license check, and uh, I, I think that's probably one of our top hits on our website. So, uh, keep up the good work and making sure that our website is staying updated. Okay, so moving on to item four point four: develop video tutorials on processes and procedures to reduce consumer licensee and applicant errors. 
for example, how to complete forms. Um, as you can see, the subjective was edited. New text is noted as underlined and deleted text is shown as strikeout. I recommend that public affairs enforcement and licensing staff work together to determine which common user errors occur when fulfilling applications and forms to then create short tutorial videos to assist licensees and the public with the proper completion and submittal of these forms. The proposed target date to meet with other CSLB divisions is spring 2022 and staff will report back to the committee on their findings in June 2022. Staff will then produce two videos per year beginning this year. Um, as, is there any com uh, comments from committee members on objective 4.4? I, I think even, uh, I guess, seeing no comments, I do have a comment. I think even when I read this particular uh, strategic uh, item, 4.4, I think I wrote uh, applicant errors and then I, I think I said for example. For example. So maybe um, staff, and if, if we maybe can change EG to for example, maybe it makes it a little bit easier to, to read. Is there any thoughts on that? We will note that change. Thank you. Okay. Moving, moving on. The last is item uh, 4.5. Develop communications with uh, C20 warm air heating ventilation and air conditioning and the classification c38 refrigeration contractors on energy work in line with governor newsman's carbon reduction goals as a cslb public board member and she and uh, sheet metal workers local 104 business representative i'm very excited about the opportunity this objective provides to protect consumers and further governor newsman's decarbonation goals by ensuring that a contractor obtains a building permit when, replace, when replacing a heating and air conditioning system. The permit ensures that the system is installed appropriately and the existing ductwork is pressure tested to confirm it does not have excessive leakage. Consumers benefit from the lower energy bills because heating and cooling is not lost by excessive leakage in an attic. I am looking forward to working with staff to develop public outreach information on this topic. I recommend staff being development of communications now with completion in this December 22. Progress will be shared with the committee in June 2022. Are there any comments from committee members on objective 4.5? Seeing, seeing no hands raised. Um, no comments, right, Shelley? Okay. Uh, committee members, do you have any final comments or suggestions on any and all the strategic goals, 4.1 through 4.5? Seeing none. Shelly, is there any public comment for public affairs strategic goals? I'm not seeing any hand raises and not seeing any requests through the Q&A or the chat. Thank you, Shelly. So at this time, is there a motion to approve the public affairs strategic plan objectives and target completion dates? So moved. Second. So moved. I have a motion by Dave De La Torre and a second by Rodney Cobos. Is there any further comment from committee members? Shelly, can you look once again? Is there any other public comment? Not seeing any. Okay, thank you. Um, Mariah, can you please call roll? Michael Mark. Yes. 
Rodney Cobo. Aye. David De La Torre. Aye. John Giratano, approved absent. Diana Love. Aye. Cindy Rich. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, this completes the committee business for today. Can I please get a motion to adjourn the public affairs committee meeting? Motion to adjourn. Second. So uh, our next scheduled meeting is the executive committee meeting, which was will be led by executive committee chair Susan Granzella, which will begin at 10 a.m. Thank you. This meeting is adjourned.
Good morning, Justin Paddock. If we can do a mic check, please. Hi, testing. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It's 10 o'clock. I trust we're all back um, for the executive committee meeting. The time is 10 a.m. and I call to order the January 26, 2022 executive committee meeting of the Contractor State License Board. I am Susan Granzella, board chair and executive committee chair. Please note that only board members who are members of the standing committee may participate in this committee meeting. Other board members who are in attendance may observe but cannot ask questions or participate in the discussion. Committee members, to mitigate any potential, potential bandwidth issues, we ask that you turn off your video camera. When you would like to comment at any time during the meeting, please select the raise your hand icon in the WebEx application. I will call on committed members to speak. When called upon, please unmute yourself. And when finished, return to mute. You will also need to click on raise your on the raise your hand. I would like to welcome Mariah Rivera, staff services analyst who joined CSLB a few weeks ago. She has been taking role earlier in the morning, but I wanted to welcome you to CSLB. We look forward to working with you in the future. So with that, Mariah, please call the roll and confirm. Thank you, Susan. Uh, Susan Granzella. Here. Mary Tyker. Mary Tyker. Here. Diana Love. Here. David De La Torre. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. We will now go on to agenda item B, public comment for items not on the agenda and future agenda item requests. It's our pub, um, next is our public comment section. This item is provided for public comment pertaining to items not on the agenda. To allow this committee enough time to conduct its full schedule of business, I will be limiting public, public comments to three minutes apiece. Please note that state law prohibits committee members from discussing any matter brought up during public comment. We are also not allowed to act on any item not on the agenda. If you want the committee to discuss a topic not on the agenda, you can ask us to consider placing that issue on the agenda for a future meeting. If you have an application, complaint, or disciplinary charges pending before the board, we ask that you not discuss the details of your case or pending complaint. Committee members are not permitted to receive evidence or information that is not part of the administrative record of the case. If your comments are related to a specific agenda item, you can make your comments now, but you may want to wait until that item comes up for discussion. We will ask for public comment before acting on any item. Shelley Jones is again our host and moderator today. She will be assisting us by monitoring the public teleconference line. Are there any members of the public who wish to address the committee or to offer an agenda item for the future meeting? This is the moderator. And just as a reminder to our attendees, you can utilize the chat, the Q&A, or the hand raise feature to request public comment. Uh, we do have one comment from JP Tenor. JP, I'm going to send you a request to unmute. Oh, my apologies. It looks like he may have dropped off. He did indicate he was having some audio issues. Oh, standby. JP, I've sent a request to unmute your microphone. Can, uh, can you hear me now? We can. Thank you. Okay, good. Okay, um, one of the things that I that I noticed that you guys might be uh, made aware of, I noticed that you uh, you guys mostly focus on residential, um, and uh, you seem not to care so much on uh, low voltage contracting. Um, I've noticed a a lot of I do a lot of work for chain stores, and I notice a lot of work uh, on uh, that C seven mostly, but there's some C ten. 
uh, for electric, uh, full electrical uh, on the gig economy, such as uh, Field Nation and Work Market. Uh, you guys have indicated uh, before uh, that um, um, that uh, the referral services and stuff, but they charge a direct cut off the top. I'd like to put it on a uh, uh, a future committee meeting, and I tried to reach out to uh, uh, Mr. Cruz uh, to speak about it, but. Uh, I could not uh, reach him. So uh, maybe if you can provide his telephone number, and uh, um, I, I have quite a uh, great deal of information. Um, you know, it, it affects mostly chains and uh, apartment complexes and uh, stuff that's considered, you know, commercial type type stuff. But always, always uh, multi location. And uh, you guys seem to don't care too much about it. So uh, I'd like to bring that up a little bit. Thank you. Register. This is Dave Fote. If you could put your contact information in the chat room, uh, Jesse Flores, our Deputy Chief of Enforcement, will contact you, get more information, okay. and see if we can't put an enforcement plan together. So thank you for sharing your comments. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. I'll put my contact there. Thank you. Do any committee members have an item they would like to place on a future meeting agenda? Hearing none, we will move on. Next is agenda item C, recognition. Today, I wanted to take a moment and recognize Chief of Licensing, Justin Paddock, for his past three years of service and leadership here at the board. Uh, Justin is here with us today, but this will be his last meeting as he was recently appointed by Governor Newsom as Bureau Chief, Household Goods and Services. We all recognize that Justin has done a great job as the licensing chief. He was instrumental in many complex projects, project resolutions, such as updating the C49 contractor requirements, implementing the new residential remodeling contractor classification, and working with IT to get many licensing transactions online during the pandemic. In addition to handling all his regular licensing duties, he always finds time to help others. One such ex example, it was while Tanya was out on special assignment, he assisted other division chiefs with administrative matters and preparing for board meetings. Not a small task. He also volunteered to take the lead on establishing the CSLB COVID testing program and mandatory reporting required of the board and that was not on his uh, job description i'm sure and so while he has definitely moved on to a new and responsible position we want it's my pleasure to honor his hard work and dedication to cslb thank you so much justin it has been a pleasure to work with you would any committee members like to comment at this time Chair uh, David Del Torre, I, um, you know, as my uh, my term as a, as chair, uh, Justin has been uh, very instrumental in, in uh, answering questions that I could not. Um, so I do want to thank him uh, and uh, congratulate him. Um, best of luck on, uh, on your new endeavors, Justin. Are there any other comments from our board members, committee members? Excuse me. Good morning, this is Diana Love. I just want to again congratulate Justin on his new adventure and say thank you for all the assistance that you have given to me in answering questions and returning phone calls promptly and just being there for my needs. And you will truly be missed, but I know that at times we have to move on into new adventures. So again, congratulations. This is Mary Teichert. I would love to add my congratulations and appreciation to Justin for all the work he's done here. Um, and also note that he was really instrumental and went way above and beyond with this series for women who are interested in becoming licensed contractors that we did last year. 
So really spent a lot of time both uh, answering individual people's questions and trying to make it as easy as possible for women in underserved communities to become licensed contractors. So really appreciated all the extra effort and uh, thoughtful help that went into that. So we'll definitely miss you, but congratulations. So first I'll ask, is there any public comment? I'm not seeing any requests at this time. All right, thank you. And Justin, I'd like to put you on the spot. Is there anything you'd like to add to say uh, for today? I know you're on the line. Yeah, C CSLB is a, an amazing group of people. Uh, it's been a sheer pleasure to work uh, for this board. Uh, it's been incredibly rewarding and I, I will miss this board and I will miss the staff very deeply and I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you, Justin. <clears throat> Wish you the best of luck. So before we move on to the next agenda item, we learned this week that Chief Deputy Registrar Tanya Corcoran has accepted the position of compliance officer with the DCA executive team, effective March 2nd. So that is our news for the week on uh, also, and we will recognize Tanya for her contributions at the March 30th meeting, board meeting. All right, so there's some news. Next, we are moving on to item D, board member it's administrative procedure manual. The review, this is the review of the board member uh, administrative procedure manual, which was last revised by the board in November, 2020. You can find the manual on page 31 of your packet. The proposed edits are intended to provide clarity on current board policy and to make other grammatical corrections. Edits are noted uh, using underline and strikeout. All of the new text is underlined and deleted text is shown. That would be page 31. And here we go. I wanted to br briefly discuss a few of the changes. Throughout the document, the reference to he or she has been replaced by gender, gender neutral language. Also, reference policies, memorandums, website addresses, and statutory references have been reviewed and updated. The final proposed change I wanted to bring to the committee's attention is on page 48 and, will specific, and is specific to salary per diem for board members. This section has been updated to clarify what will be paid for, which is attendance at official board and committee meetings and DCA training. There is a section now that clarifies what may be paid for, which is substantial service performed by a board member that takes up more than an hour on a specific day to attend official gatherings, events, hearings, and conferences or meetings. It further clarifies that the board chair will perform the final approval of all salary per diem or travel related expenses for the board members. Committee members, um, do you have any comments or suggestions on this matter? Uh, chair Gonzala, yeah, I, uh, you know, I, it's, um, it's a little bit more specific. Uh, um, the, as far as uh, identifying the what will be considered a, um, right. reimbursable, or, uh, as far as the one hour, anything uh, um, involving more than one hour. So I think it's a, uh, yeah, that's, I support. Oh, good. Thank you. It, it did need clarification as we move forward, especially uh, in these business times. So we were very glad for that. Uh, seeing no comments from uh, committee members, Shelley, is there any public comment on this matter? Um, we have one uh, comment um, from Richard Marcuson. It was on the prior item. I just wanted to congratulate Justin for his help over the years. Other than that, um, no other comments. Thank you. May I ask for a motion? Um, do I have a motion to approve the 2022 board member administrative procedure manual? So moved. Dave, thank you. Second. And Diana Love on a second. 
Thank you. Is there any further comment from um, committee members? And Shelley, is there any public comment? Mariah, please call roll. Um, no comments at this time. Very good. Oh, thank you. Susan Granzella. Yes. Mary Tykert. Yes. Diana Love. Yes. David De La Torre. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. We are now on agenda item E, which is the establishment of the Executive Administrative and Information Technology Strategic Plan Objective Target Dates. The full draft of the 2022 um, 2024 strategic plan begins on page 108. The executive objections, which we are reviewing at this time, are on page 125 of your packet. <clears throat> so we will start with item 5.1, reporting to the board on IT security to protect secure CSLB sensitive data. The proposed target date is ongoing. <clears throat> I am pleased to report that board member Frank Altamira will continue to work with me on a two-person advisory committee we started um, in the past. In fact, I'm equally pleased to uh, announce that he will, Frank has agreed to take the lead on the committee and will be working with uh, IT uh, Chief Jason Perez. I recommend that the first action taken is for the IT Advisory committee, committee to meet with IT Chief Jason Perez to identify what we can publicly discuss and the best format and frequency for presenting this information to the board. Are there any comments from the committee members on objective 5.1? All right, moving on. Five, item 5.2, research and develop tools in addition to existing manual surveys that will provide the board and staff with feedback on the public's perception of staff performance and customer service. The proposed target date is ongoing because the surveys are currently in use. I'd like for staff to develop a plan for additional surveys to tell us how we are doing and report back to the executive committee in July of 2022. The survey should be readily accessible and data routinely reviewed. Are there any comments from the committee members on object objective 5.2? All right, moving on to objective uh, 5.3, replace the automated phone system to ensure callers can speak to a representative in a timely fashion. The proposed target date is March of 2023. I recommend that the, an internal work group com comprised of licensing, public affairs, and IT staff be established. Licensing can review statistics, staffing, and work with IT to identify key functionality for a new system. Public affairs can take the lead on developing recommendations for improving the existing phone tree and updating content for the CSLB website, and IT can research automated phone systems. Are there any comments from committee members on objective 5.3? Yeah, Chair Granzella, David Delatore. I, uh, um, it, yeah, we can't lose touch of that, that human uh, touch. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of frustration around uh, automation and people want to just deal with a live person. So, um, you know, um, Keeping in mind that you know our the staff can handle the voluminous uh, amount of phone calls, so um, just want to add that. Thank you. I agree, and that will definitely be an important objective. Chair Gonzalo, this is Diana Love. In yes. one, in one, are we looking at in replacing the automated system with different types of a system? Um, for example when you call various organizations if you're in line you can be called back are we looking at those types of things 
Well, I believe they were looking at, um, Dave, if you'd like to uh, uh, help on this, but I, I do think that they are looking and doing the requirement, formal requirements of any new system, taking into account the technology that's available that might uh, aid the callers. So I believe that's part of this strategic um, objective. Dave, did you have anything to add on this? Actually, I'd like to ask Jason Perez to comment on that. I know that he's been doing a lot of research. So Jason. Hello. Uh... Um, good morning. Um, so, yes, um, we have been looking at the requirements and still working on requirements gathering for the business and also to the technical requirements. So while we're still looking at that, we are looking at some of the additional features that uh, are part of the new automated phone systems. And this is definitely one of those that will be put on as a business requirement. Um, however, we're still looking at some of the automated systems. Do we have, are we going to have a um, committee of sorts that will be looking at that along with IT or who is, who are the actual people involved in that? So we are, as a board chair announced, that we will be looking at through our workshop group that has been developed through licensing, public affairs, and the IT staff. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Any further comments? All right. Thank you very much for your input on that. Moving to item 5.4, improve staff recruitment, onboarding and training, team building for staff development. The proposed target date is July 2022. I'd like for the administrative staff to develop a plan and report back to the executive committee in July of 2022. Are there any comments uh, from committee members on this? All right. Um, our last objective is item 5.5. Evaluate applicant and licensee online logins or profiles to help tailor the content to the user, track submissions and interactions, etc. And the target date is December 2022 to procure the product, software product uh, that would help automate this, and in December 2023, full implementation. I'd like the uh, IT staff to discuss the different platforms, research, platforms research and associated costs at the next IT advisory committee meeting. Do we have any comments from committee members on objective 5.5? All right. So committee members, do you have any final comments or suggestions uh, on our strategic plan? Shelley, is there any public comment? We do have one comment from JP Tenor. JP, I've sent a request to unmute your microphone. Uh, that was actually on the last um, uh, topic on uh, the phone system. All right. But uh, so, uh, to no, no, no public comment on anything uh, else. So if you have a further comment on the phone system, if you could leave your uh, information, we'll be happy to get back to you to collect those comments, or you can certainly share those with us now. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I left it up above, uh, so uh, so you, you have it. Oh, okay, good. All right. Thank you very much for your input. So, do I have a meeting to approve the executive, administrative, and information technology strategic plan objectives and target dates? May I have a motion? So, Diana. And do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mary. And are there any further comments from committee members at this time? 
And Shelly, is there any public comment? There is not. All right. Mariah, please call the roll. Susan Granzella? Yes. Mary Tykert? Yes. Diana Love? Yes. David De La Torre? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Mariah. That completes the executive committee's business for today. After we adjourn this meeting, we'll have a short break to transition the licensing committee meeting, which will be uh, led by Chair Miguel Galarraza. So the question right now is how, how long uh, will it take you, Shelley, to switch the panelists for the next meeting? Uh, just a couple of minutes. Okay, good. So our meeting is uh, complete for today and we will await your, um, or Miguel, starting the next meeting. Thank you. All right, Ms. Uh, Shelley, are we good to go? We are ready. All right, thank you. I appreciate that. The time is now 1027. Uh, good morning, all committee members. I call to order this January 26, 2022, the licensing committee meeting, the California State Contractors License Board. My name is Miguel Galarza and I am the chair of said committee. Board member Don Girantano has an approved absence. Uh, please note that only board members who are members of the standing committee may participate in this committee meeting. Other board members who are in attendance may observe but cannot ask questions or participate in the discussion. For any members, to mitigate any potential bandwidth issues, we ask that you turn off your video cameras when you would like to comment and in time during the meeting, please select the raise hand icon in the WebEx application. I will call our committee members to speak. When called upon, uh, please unmute yourself and then when you're finished, please return to mute. You'll also need to click on your raise hand icon to lower your hand after you've spoken. It's now time for roll call. Mariah, welcome uh, to the committee. And please, uh, if you'd be so kind, call roll call to form. We have a form. Miguel Galarza. Present. Frank Altamora. Here. Steve Pinelli. Here. Jim Ruane. Here. Johnny Simpson. Here. Mary Tiger. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you, Maya. The next agenda item, item B on our public comment section. This item is provided for public comment pertaining to items not on the agenda. To allow this committee enough time to conduct its fully scheduled business, I will be limiting public comment to three minutes apiece. Please note that state law prohibits committee members from discussing any matter brought up during public comment. We are also not allowed to act on any item not on the agenda. If you want the committee to discuss a topic not on the agenda, you can ask for it to be considered to be placed as an issue 
on an agenda for future meetings. If you have any applications, complaints, or disciplinary charges pending before the board, we ask that you do not discuss the details of your case or pending complaint. Committee members are not permitted to receive evidence or information that is not part of the administrative record in the case. If your comments are related to a specific agenda item, you can make your comments now, but if you may wait uh, until that comment and that item comes up for discussion, you will ask for public comment before acting on any item. Uh, Sheila Jones, excuse me, Shelly Jones is our host and moderator today, and she will be assisting us and specifically me by moderating public comment. Uh, are there any comments? Do any committee members? I'm not have... seeing any comments at this time. Thank you so much, Shelly. Do any committee members have anything they'd like to place on a meeting agenda? Seeing and hearing none. Uh, Shelly, please check to see if there are any members of the public who wish to address the committee or to offer an agenda item for a future meeting. We do have one request from Latanya Hawkins. Latanya, I've sent a request to unmute your microphone. As a reminder, you will have three minutes. Thank you so much, and I apologize if this is not the correct time, but I would definitely have uh, some suggestions and feedback for uh, yourself as the chair and board in regards to uh, committee engagement. So I'm not sure if this is the correct time. All right. Um, if it's regarding the specific uh, action item on our agenda, it may, may make sense for you to wait uh, until that action item, and then uh, I will certainly be offering for public comment after that specific item has been read. Okay, I will wait. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Not seeing any other requests. Thank you so much, Shelley. Uh, we're gonna go and move on to uh, agenda item C, which is the establishment of the licensing testing strategy plan and objectives and target dates. The full draft of the 2022 through 2024 strategic plan begins on page 109. The licensing and testing objectives, which are reviewing and discussing today, are on page 121 of your packet. You will see that most of the objectives have blue underlined and stricken out words. Staff has polished the language presented at the November 29th board meeting. So it is clear to individuals that may not be familiar with CSLB, there is, was no intent to change the meaning of the objectives. As we discuss each item, please feel free to comment if you have any concerns or recommended edits to the language. We'll start with item 1.1, access barriers to licensure for women and minorities and create an outreach plan to community colleges, construction management programs, labor unions, and workforce and development groups to increase license diversity and to create a better understanding of applicants and licensees. Considering this objective, we started with a recent Women in Construction Workshop conducted under the leadership of board member Jim Rulane and facilitated by my board member Mary Tigert. And the proposed target date is ongoing. I recommend that the first action taken is that the licensing division staff prepare a brief report for the summer of 2022 board meeting on the following items. Item one. Sales LB's activity to date on this issue. Item two, a summary of any recent reports on barriers to licensure and on the construction industry or licensing in general, and a draft outreach plan for the fall and winter of 2022 involving participation with industrial groups and speaking at community colleges, construction management programs, labor unions, workforce development groups. Lastly, to that point, I would like the board to consider CSLB participate in an upcoming event in Richmond, California on April 5th, known as the Small Business Construction Expo. 
This event will be co-sponsored by AGC of California in collaboration with various public works agencies. I believe this would be an outstanding opportunity to reach the exact group of individuals we are looking to outreach to. The event was last held in 2019 and was attended by 600 entrepreneurs and small business owners, some that were licensed and some that were not. Um, so I think that would be an excellent opportunity. Are there any comments from the committee members on objectives 1.1? Seeing and hearing none, I'd like to move on to item 1.2. Study and appraise opportunities to waive examination requirements for out-of-state contractors to reduce barriers to licensure. The proposed target date is June 2023. I would like for staff to summarize other states' approaches on this matter and to present findings to the board in the winter of 2022. Do I have any, any comments from committee members on objective two point, excuse me, 1.2? Hearing and seeing none, I'll move on to item 1.3. Continuing automation and streamlining of all online application licensing and examination procedures to improve process efficiency. The proposed target date is December of 2024. I recommend that an internal work group comp comprising of licensed and IT staff be established and that they provide summer and winter updates to the board on procurement and programming of the application system. Any comments from committee members on objective 1.3? Hearing and seeing none, we'll move on to item 1.4. Assess and report on how to incorporate new and emerging technologies into licensure process to ensure licensees continue to represent reliability and contracting excellence. The proposed target date is ongoing, however I'd like, licensing to provide an annual report to the board each summer. Any comments from committee members on objective 1.4? Hearing and seeing none. Chair Galarza? Yes. I do see that member Altamira has his hand up. Please. Yes, thank you. Um, my comment was back for um, item 1.2. I know the language changes are meant to be minor and that the topic itself is fairly broad, but it looks like in the crossed out section, um, it's focusing on whether or not we are waiving exams, whereas the new language uh, maybe points to the requirements to take those exams. Um, so I think there's a little bit of a distinction there, but considering that it's overall to study and appraise these opportunities in general, um, it may not be too significant. Thank you, Frank. Uh, would staff make sure and take a note of that recommendation from Frank? Yes. Uh, Frank, would you have less concern if we were moved out of state? Go ahead, Frank. Um, Instead of editing on the fly, if you don't mind, Frank, yeah, do you we could I just give you a ring? Yeah, I think okay. I think it. Because um, I certainly don't want to change the intent. Yep, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, any other comments, Shelley? Seeing and hearing none. Uh, uh, the next item is item one point five, in partnership with Public Affairs, a streamline and eliminate jargon in the CSLB licensing web page handouts, publications, and forms to reduce user confusion and elevate processing times. The target date for this is December 2022 and is ongoing. I'd like the licensing and public affairs staff to review all licensing and application web pages, content, and update web pages in order of importance. Any comments from the committee members on objective 1.5? 
1.5. Hearing and seeing none. Our last objective is item 1.6, and that is to complete the exam administration outsource transition and access remote testing options. The target date is October 22, excuse me, 2022. And this process is already underway, and I would like IT and licensing staff to provide us an update, um, a progress update on this work at each board meeting in 2022. Are there any comments on objective 1.6? Hearing none, uh, I believe that wraps up our objectives. I'd like to seek comments on licensing and testing items. Miguel, if, if I may be so bold, would you mind, um, before considering your vote, um, just asking that staff work directly with Frank um, to just update item 1.2? And then we'll report to the full board once it's ready. Thank you so much, Justin. And by the way, Justin, I did not have an opportunity to say thank you for your patience in guiding me, uh, protecting me, nurturing me, and making sure I was fully briefed on my participation on this board. And with that, for that, I thank you tremendously. I very much appreciate working with you, Miguel. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to now ask for a motion do we have a motion to, uh, would it be appropriate to ask for public comment, Shelley? Chair Galarza, let's make the motion first, then we can call for public comment. Very fair, fair enough. Um, do we have a motion to approve the licensing and testing strategic plan and objectives and target dates? Chair Jim Ruway, motion to approve. Thank you, Jim. Do we have a second? Steve Pinelli, second. And uh, who was that? I apologize. Steve Pinelli, second. Thank you, Thank you Steve. Um, I would now like to ask for public comment, or do we have any comments from our committee members first? Hearing and seeing none, uh, I believe we had somebody in the queue for public comment. Hopefully, they're still there. We do. Latonya Hawkins, I've sent a request to unmute your microphone. Thank you so much. I just want to uh, say thank you to everyone. You, uh, Miguel, as a chair and other board members uh, for actually having this platform for us to be able to speak. It's encouraging to see all the efforts to increase community engagement. And so my comments are in regards to that. Um, I am here representing Construction Resource Center. Uh, we are a nonprofit agency committed to assisting contractors and also tradespersons to not only grow their business, but namely acquire their state license, build their back office, and close that access gap. And so uh, given the uh, state board uh, efforts to increase community engagement, I did have several suggestions, if possible, uh, for you to entertain as uh, a group uh, for the California State License Board to possibly provide representatives uh, via Zoom or in person when safe. Uh, to speak directly to contractors in regards to state licensing board's questions. Uh, CRC, we sponsor outreach events, namely one that's coming up on March 10th uh, in partnership with the Minority Business Consortium. And we also uh, conduct uh, two uh, annual 10-week project management courses uh, that has been waitlisted, which has had favorable response, but to have a representative from the state licensing board that they could speak to directly and answer questions based on their circumstances would be absolutely fabulous to increase uh, community engagement. Uh, also, another suggestion is maybe an online platform, uh, maybe quarterly basis, brown bag with the board or brown bag with the state board would be nice, where um, our clients for CRC could actually log on and pose questions based on uh, their individual circumstances uh, regarding exams and licensing questions. And there's a link maybe from this California State License Board to such events uh, that we have on an ongoing basis. Uh, we also would like to have uh, California State License Board uh, to advocate resources that we have. We have our four volume series of our standard operating procedures with ultimate construction guides. We have our e-learning modules, we have our classes, and by this partnership and by actually having a partnership with a designated representative that would help us in the community, we feel that this would provide a local personalized platform on an ongoing basis for the underrepresented 
and also will help to increase minority participation in the industry. And this would uh, namely address uh, the issues that were mentioned uh, ahead of time, or excuse me, prior in regards to addressing barriers and also providing added resources. And so I wanna thank you for your time and thank you for the consideration. Thank you, Ms. Hawkins. Um, Justin, did you have a thought? Uh, Ms. Hawkins, if it's possible, if you could communicate your contact information to Shelly Jones, she's our, our host today. I'd like to just touch base with you after. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mr. Paddock. Thank you. Uh, Shelly, any other public comment? Uh, no other requests at this time. And Ms. Hawkins, if you can leave that in the chat and direct that to um, myself, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Mariah, please, roll call. Miguel Galarza. Present. Frank Altamora. Yes. Steve Pinelli. Yes. Jim Ruane. Aye. Johnny Simpson. Aye. Mary Tyker. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, Mariah. Uh, after we adjourn the licensing committee meeting, we will have a short break to transition to the legislative committee meeting, which will be held by the legislative chair, Jim, board member Jim Lane. I do would like to have a motion to adjourn the licensing committee. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no roll call is needed. We are. Who was the second by? Sorry, Chair Galarza. Jim Ruane. First was. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jim. We are adjourned.
Hi, Jim. Dave, so the uh, committee members are the same as the licensing committee. So looks like we're probably, probably ready to go when you are. All set. Anytime you're ready. I'll just kick it off now. Yeah, I think so. I think okay, good. sounds good. Uh, good morning. I'm Jim Ruane, the committee chair of the legislative committee. I'd like to call the January 26, 2022 Legislative Committee meeting of the Contractor State License Board to order. First of all, I want to thank the board members for attending today's video teleconference Legislative Committee meeting. Board members, just some uh, homework here. To ensure we don't have any bandwidth issues, please keep your, voice, your video camera off when you are not speaking. When you would like to comment at any time during the meeting, please turn on your camera or select the raise your hand icon in the WebEx application. I will call on board members to speak. When called upon, please unmute yourself, and when finished, return to mute and turn off your camera. You will also need to click on the raise your hand icon to lower your hand. Only board members who are members of the Legislative Committee may comment or participate in the meeting. Members of the public, if you joined us on WebEx and would like to make a comment at the appropriate time, either raise your hand or use the chat feature to send us a note that you would like to offer public comment. If you joined us by phone and would like to make a public comment during public comment opportunities, Press star three to raise your hand. We will use this same system throughout the meeting for public comment during each agenda item. Shelly Jones is our host and moderator today. She will be assisting us by monitoring the public teleconference line. Thank you, Shelly. Uh, I'll now call for a quorum. Mariah, can you please call roll and establish a quorum? Jim Ruane. Here. Frank Altamura. Here. Miguel Galarza. Here. Steve Pinelli. Here. Johnny Simpson. Here. Mary Tyker. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you very much, Mariah. Our next item is B, public comment session for items not on this agenda and future agenda item requests. This item is provided for members of the public to request that an item be placed on a future committee agenda and to comment on items not on today's agenda. To allow this committee meeting and the committee and enough time to conduct its full schedule of business, I will be limiting public comment to three minutes apiece. Please note that state law prohibits committee members from discussing any matter brought up during the public comment. We're also not allowed to act on any item not on this agenda. If you want the committee to discuss a topic not on this agenda, you can ask us to consider placing that issue on the agenda of a future meeting. If you have an application, complaint, or disciplinary charges pending before the board, we ask that you not discuss the details of your case or pending complaint. Committee members are not permitted to receive evidence or information that is not part of the administrative record in the case. If this occurs, the moderator will gather the contact info and let the person know someone from the board will be in touch after the meeting. If your comments are related to a specific agenda item, you can make your comments now, but we ask that you wait until that item comes up for discussion. We will ask for public comment for acting on any item. Shelly, uh, please check and see if there are any members of the public who wish to address the committee or to offer an agenda item for a future meeting. Um, not for this item. I do not see any requests for comment at this time. Thank you. Do any committee members have an item they would like to place on a future meeting agenda? All right, seeing none, we will now move to our next agenda item. C, review, discussion, and possible action to establish the legislative strategic objective target dates of the board's 2022-2024 strategic plan. The full draft of the 2022-2024 strategic plan begins on page 109 of your packet. The legislative vision objectives we are reviewing and discussing today are on page 123 of the packet. We'll begin with item 3.1, which states, host an annual legislative day to build proactive relationships with lawmakers and to enhance effectiveness. Legislative days are usually commenced in late March or early April after the bill introduction deadline. The proposed target date to conduct the first CSLB legislative day is April 2023. Planning the event for next year seemed more appropriate given the COVID-19 concerns this year. Any comments from committee members on objective 3.1? All right, seeing none. 
Our next item is 3.2, review policies, procedures, and current practices for compliance with the Administrative Procedures Act to ensure appropriate decision-making. This item involves a review of CSLB enforcement and licensing division operations to ensure current processes and procedures are compliant with the rulemaking requirements of the APA. Staff intends to commence the review July, 2022. Any comments on the committee members, from the committee members on objective 3.2? All right, seeing none, our next item is 3.3, which states, Use plain language in all legislative proposals and bill analyses for better consumer and contractor understanding. As you can see, this objective was edited to provide additional clarity. New text is noted as underlined and deleted text is shown as strikeout. Sponsored legislation was replaced with legislative proposals and bill analyses, as these are documents that are prepared by staff and presented to the board for review and consideration. Staff will continue to make a conscientious effort in all documentation and correspondence to ensure written descriptions of legislation are clear and concise. The goal is immediate and ongoing. Do we have any comments on objective 3.3? All right, seeing none, we'll get on to 3.4. Pursue legislation requiring workers' compensation insurance for all contractors to protect consumers and workers. This item will be discussed in more detail in agenda item E. The legislation is currently in a bill before the state legislature. September 2022 was chosen as the target date as it marks the end of one of the governor's bill signing periods, at which point the governor can choose to sign it or not. Any comments on 3.4? All right, we'll get on to 3.5. Identify and include fiscal impact impacts for the board's consideration in all legislative proposals and bill analyses. Staff will ensure all prospective fiscal impacts of legislative proposals and bill analyses are presented to the board. The goal is immediate and ongoing. Consistent with this objective, the two proposals in agenda item E each have fiscal impacts. Any comments on 3.5? Okay. And our last is 3.6, review and collaborate with local and state government to determine if CSLB's hazardous and asbestos certification remain viable and are effective in protecting consumers in, de in declared disaster areas. It was evident during the strategic planning sessions that CSLB's hazardous substances and asbestos certifica certification programs should receive a comprehensive review in light of the increased disaster activity in California. The status update for this item is July, 2023. Any comments from committee members on objective 3.6? All right, seeing none, committee members, do you have any final comments or suggestions? Shelley, is there any public comment? Not seeing any at this time. Thank you. Um, at this time, we'll entertain a motion to approve the legislation Strategic plan objectives and target completion dates. No motion. And then moms. Second. Who is the uh, motion maker? Miguel Galarson. Second. Johnny Simpson. Thank you. Any further comment from committee members? Shelley, any public comment? None at this time. Hi, would you please call the roll? Jim Ruane. Aye. Frank Altamura. Yes. Miguel Galarza. Yes. Steve Pinelli. Aye. Johnny Simpson. Aye. Mary Tyker. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, Mariah. Our next item is D, review discussion of possible action by the committee on the appropriate specialty contractor license classification to install, modify, and repair battery energy storage systems. We are now on page 87 of your packets for this item. A, regulatory rulemaking process overview by Department of Consumer Affairs Legal Counsel. This item relates to the CSLB review of the appropriate license classification to install battery energy storage systems. 
Regulatory rulemaking under the Administrative Procedures Act is required to change the CSLB specialty license classifications to include battery energy storage systems. To provide us a brief overview of the regulatory rulemaking process under the Administrative Procedures Act, I will now invite Regulatory Counsel Danny Rogers to join us for her presentation. Danny. Good morning, committee members. I am Danny Rogers, Regulatory Counsel for the Board. I'm here to provide you with an overview of the regulatory process and answer any questions you may have. Including, included within your meeting materials are two regulatory process timelines. One timeline is expedited at page 88 with a shortened timeline for certain steps. The other timeline is longer at page 90 and is a more conservative estimate of the time it could take to complete the regulatory process. Right now, we are in the concept phase of the regulatory process. This phase entails discussion of proposed text and reaching a consensus on proposed regulatory language. The more we can come to a consensus on proposed language, the smoother the regulatory process will be. Once the board votes on and approves proposed language, it will be board staff's job to draft regulatory documents, which include the notice and initial statement of reasons. This phase can take anywhere from 30 to 90 days, depending on how expeditiously staff can act to assemble package documents. Once this step is complete, the process begins with the filing of notice with the Office of Administrative Law. This commences the 45 day comment period, during which members of the public can comment on the proposed text. The board may opt to hold a public hearing on the proposal if a hearing is requested by a member of the public. The public may then make further comments at this hearing. After the hearing, if held, staff will review any public comments received, prepare proposed responses to the comments, and evaluate whether to modify any aspect of the proposed language based on the comments. If the board chooses to modify text, there will be an additional 15 day period in which the public can make comments on any modifications. Once the comment period is concluded and the board has approved responses to public comments, the rulemaking package is filed with the Office of Administrative Law. The Office of Administrative Law then has 30 working days to review and, and approve the regulations. Are there any questions from committee members? Any questions for uh, Danny? Any, anyone from the public, Shelley? We do have one request uh, from an uh, individual identified as Colin user number six. I've sent a request to unmute your microphone. Uh, Chair Wayne, this is Bernadette Del Cura with Kelsa. I apologize. I raised my hand to speak to the overall agenda item. I'm happy to speak now, or I can wait until you're done with the, the entire presentation. Here, if you have any public comment, so now's a good time. Okay. All right. Uh, so this is Bernadette Del Cura, Executive Director of the California Solar and Storage Association. Uh, Kelsa represents uh, 720 business members. from all segments of the distributed solar and storage industry, including C46 solar contractors, as well as the manufacturers of solar and battery storage products. Our members have helped California install 1.3 million rooftop solar systems, over 70,000 batteries uh, over the past few years tied to those solar panels, and we play a vital role in helping the state meet its ambitious climate change and clean energy goals. Uh, that's why it's so important that CSLB follow rulemaking procedures to hear from all stakeholders and consider the economic impacts of any proposed regulation that would restrict the ability of solar contractors to install energy storage systems. We're glad that the CSLB is back on a rulemaking track. We also really appreciate that the board is open to considering reasonable alternatives uh, to the devastating and unjustified proposal to entirely prohibit solar contractors from installing batteries with their qualified workforce. As you know, solar contractors have been performing this work safely under their C46 license classification for over 40 years. Nonetheless, we understand that the board is interested in battery installations and are committed to seeing if Kelsa can reach an agreement with other stakeholders on a common sense regulation. I want to thank your staff for their work over the holidays to develop an alternative regulatory concept and for sharing that with Kelsa. We were prepared to submit comments on the staff's proposal last week, but given that IBEW and NECA have rejected that alternative, 
uh, were switching gears to respond to their proposed regulation instead. Having received it less than a week ago, <clears throat> we are not ready to offer a formal response today, but I will say there are a number of points that we agree with IBW on. We're preparing modified language for an alternative that builds off <clears throat> of what IBW submitted. I appreciate uh, the chair for being willing to postpone the legislative committee's discussion of potential alternative regulations to allow the parties time to try to come to an agreement on alternative language. We're committed to working with you and hopefully we will have agreed upon language for the committee to consider shortly. Thank you. Thank you for your, your comments. Anything else from the public, Shelley? No other requests at this time. Thank you. And a special thanks to Danny for your presentation. It was very helpful for all of us. Thank you very much, Danny. You're uh, very welcome. <clears throat> our next items are B and C, which are being covered together as follows. B, update on stakeholder meetings, and C, review discussion and possible action on regulatory concept presented to the committee as an alternative to the concept pre presented to the board at the November 29th, 2021 meeting. We're now on page 93 of your packets. For background, on July 27th, 2021, the CSLB held a public meeting to review, discuss, and take action on the June 30th, 2021 Battery Energy Storage System License Classification Report issued by the University of California, Berkeley. At that meeting, the board moved and voted to rescind all prior staff determinations that stated that a C46 solar contractor license could install battery energy storage systems as incidental and supplemental work and, and adopted UC Berkeley's recommendation to preclude C46 licensees from installing uh, BESS battery energy storage systems in any setting. Staff was directed to develop regulatory rulemaking language for the board's consideration. At the November 29th, 2021 board meeting, CSLB staff presented for the board's consideration a draft regulatory rulemaking proposal that would codify the board's July 2021 motion by precluding C46 solar contractors from installing battery energy storage systems in any situation. The board did not approve staff regulatory rulemaking proposal. Instead, the board moved at the November 29th board meeting to refer the battery energy storage systems matter to the board's legislative committee, also to direct staff to collect additional stakeholder input and to develop alternative language that may be acceptable to both the solar and electrical stakeholders. The board also voted that if no alternative language is ready for the March 22 board meeting, that staff present the November 29th proposal, which precludes the C46 from installing batteries in all scenarios for the board's approval. After the November 29th meeting, staff collected additional stakeholder input as directed by the board. Summaries of these efforts start on page 93 of your packet. Staff also developed alternative language as directed by the board. That alternative language can be viewed at the website link on page 93 of the packet. The staff alternative language would provide that the C46 solar contractor may install battery energy storage systems when paired with a photo photovoltaic a system on specific residential and light commercial structures. The goal as directed by the board was that this alternative language may be acceptable to both the solar and electrical stakeholders. The electrical stakeholders have responded with proposal of their own, which staff received after the materials were printed for this packet. The electrical stakeholders proposal is viewable at the same website link included on page 93 of the packet. The electrical stakeholders regulatory language would authorize the C46 classification to install battery energy storage systems when paired with a photovoltaic voltaic system based on spe specified energy thresholds. The solar stakeholders have performed a preliminary review of the electrical stakeholders alternative regulatory proposal and are preparing comments on that proposal as well as on CSLB's staff proposal. We just heard that from the public. Consequently, there is no alternative Alternate regulatory rulemaking language agreed upon by the solar and electrical industries for the committee to consider at this time. In addition, there is an update to what is in the packet regarding staff's meeting with the Office of the State Fire Marshal OSFM. The packet at the top of page 94 describes <clears throat> a scheduled meeting between staff and the OSFM. This meeting was held on Monday, January 24, 2022. CSLB staff shared with OSFM staff the electrical industry proposal that would authorize the C46 classification to install battery energy storage systems pursuant to energy capacity limits described in the fire code. 
The OSFM representative stated that they did not have concerns referencing the fire code. They requested CSLB provide them with any agreed language between the solar and electrical industry. And at, ta- at that time, they will share the concept language with CalBO, the building, building officials, and the California Fire Chiefs Association and report back. This agenda item is for informational only. As the board assigned the battery energy storage system as matter to this committee, this update is to inform the committee of staff efforts to implement the board's November 29th, 2021 motion. As the chair of this committee, I want to remind everyone that the board has spent considerable time and resources over the last five years on this matter. As such, I strongly encourage the solar and electrical industry representatives to work together in a collaborative and timely fashion to develop a regulatory proposal that can be brought back before this committee for review in February or perhaps March. When language agreeable to stakeholders is developed, I will schedule a legislative committee meeting to review, discuss, and hopefully recommend full board approval. This needs to occur as soon as possible, certainly no later than the scheduled March 30th full board meeting. No action is being requested of the committee at this time. Are there any comments from committee members? Shelley, anything from the public? Not seeing anything at this time. All right, thank you. We are now moving to agenda item E, update on CSLB sponsored bills or legislative proposals. We are now on page 99 of your packets. The first item is A, Senate Bill 216 Dodd Contractors, Workers' Compensation Insurance Mandatory Coverage. This is a CSLB sponsored bill that would require C8, concrete, C20, HVAC, and D49 tree service contractors have a certificate of workers' compensation insurance policy on file with the CSLB in the first year and for all contractors after three. <coughs> Excuse me. The board has a support position on this bill. Uh, Chief, do you have any updates for us as the bill moves through the legislature? Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning, members. Yes, there are some updates on this bill. So we had reported last year that this would become a two-year bill, and we are pleased to report it was moved off the inactive file to the Senate floor in early January and voted over to the Assembly, which is great news. So just a couple of quick items. Um, I'd like to make a note about the fiscal on page 100. That was what uh, the board staff reported uh, to the legislature last year, but we do want to update you that we might have to tweak those numbers slightly as a result of our new fees that were just put into statute. But as the packet explains, these are just projections. Um, They're very speculative. It's difficult to predict um, what will happen to uh, renewal revenue if if anything, uh, when these uh, requirements are put into effect, but we just want to alert you to that possibility of changing numbers. As for the bill itself, um, now that it is moving again, we do want to report to you uh, that we recently discussed with Legislative Chair Jim Ruane some amendments to update the bill. So there are three amendments that we sent over to the Senator's office that are pending, and I just want to tell you about these. The first one uh, is simply moving the effective dates forward a year since this bill was delayed a year. The bill was written to, uh, as Mr. Chair explained, to require workers' compensation for certain classes immediately and then for everyone in three years. So this amendment would move the 2025 date to 2026 to keep that three years since the bill was um, delayed for a year. The second amendment relates to the classifications that would be required to have workers comp in the first year. So right now, as Mr. Chair stated, it's the C8 concrete, the C20 HVAC, and the D49 tree service. Uh, We have asked that that list include the C22 asbestos abatement contractor. And that's actually simply because um, in order to obtain that C22, you have to have a DOSH registration. And the DOSH registration actually requires workers comp. So the, it's, it's really kind of just aligning existing law. The C-22 already has comp, so we loop them in with that um, first group. And then finally, the third amendment, this relates to uh, the joint venture license, which is kind of a unique license here at CSLB for anybody who doesn't know. A joint venture is simply a combination of one or two, I'm sorry, of uh, two or more individuals or entities that are actually already actively licensed in good standing. So the industry actually reached out to us and noted that many joint ventures will use the workers' comp policy of one of those underlying um, 
licensees who formed the joint venture. So they were concerned that the bill as written uh, would require the joint venture itself to get a policy as well. So the amendment would allow just the joint ventures to file an exemption on the theory that the workers' comp would be in place the two foundational licenses, which is what would happen. So um, it's really kind of just a cleanup. Uh, and if the joint venture does decide that they want to be an employer, the bill would still require them to file the certificate, but the amendment would allow them to file the exemption when the underlying licenses have comp for employees. So those were the amendments that we've asked for now that the, the bill is moving. Um, there's a couple of other changes in those amendments, but they're really just clarifying. So I'll just um, turn it over to Mr. Chair unless there's any questions. Um, or I can explain any more of this. Um, and that is the update. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mike. This item is for information only and no action is being requested of the committee. Are there any uh, comments from the committee uh, or questions? Uh, Steve Pinelli. Uh, one question is the, so the insurance to file by that would go from 2025 to 2026. Is that where you're staying, Mike? That's the amendments. Yeah, that's correct. That is what we requested in the amendment, which we sent over to the senator's office. They've not, they're not in print. So let's make that clear. Uh, they're, they're under consideration. Um, and we'll let you know the status of those and uh, when they're introduced, if they're introduced. But we're, we're optimistic that, um, you know, they, they seem to be reasonable changes that don't change the, the intent of this measure too much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any uh, other questions or comments from the committee? Shelly, anything uh, from the public? Not seeing anything at this time. Thank you. We'll move on to our next item. Page 101 of your packets. B, a legislative proposal that would increase administrative civil penalties for licensee failure to comply with building permit requirements. This refers to a legislative proposal that increases administrative fines for a licensed contractor failing to comply with various state codes including failing to comply with building permit requirements. The board approved staff to seek an author for this legislative proposal at the November 29th, 2021 board meeting. And Chief, you have any update on this proposal? Just that we are very pleased to announce that we were able to um, secure an author for the proposal. Assembly member Quirk has agreed to introduce the measure. Uh, we're hoping that will happen very soon here in the next couple of weeks. Um, some of you may recall Assembly Member Quirk uh, introduced our sponsored illegal dumping bill, which was successful last year. Um, so we are pleased to make that announcement and we'll certainly uh, keep you apprised as the bill is introduced and moves through the legislature. So we just wanted to report that good news. Thank you, Mike, and keep us posted. As you said, we're very, uh, very interested in this. Any uh, comments or questions from committee members? Shelly, anything from the public? Not seeing anything at this time. Thank you. And with that, we'll move to our final item F, which is adjournment. Thank you. That concludes the legislative committee meeting and all meetings for today. Is there a motion to adjourn the legislative committee meeting? Motion to adjourn. Steve Pennelly, second. Second. Uh, roll call is not needed. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you very much.